Good day chaps. So today's video is going to cover one of those odd STT projects that some of you will be familiar with, but possibly for the wrong reasons. The vehicle is the Chimera 1955, one of several projects to reuse this name. But you might know it as Manticore, a light tank from World of Tanks. So how did we get from Chimera to Manticore? Chimera itself begins as part of the 8th Technical Staff Course held by the Royal Military College of Science in December 1955. The aim of the course was to design a vehicle mounted substitute for the BAT, or Battalion Anti-Tank, a 120mm recoilless rifle which replaced the older 17-pounder towed guns as the Army's anti-tank weapon, until the later arrival of anti-tank guided missiles. The BAT, and its many variants, were a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, it provided a very effective 120mm Hesh round, able to scab up to 400mm of armour, far more than many tank guns at its time, and it had a small profile, and was relatively cheap to build and operate, and was air portable. On the downside, it was very heavy, and even after being reworked, was still cumbersome, it required a dedicated vehicle to move it any distance, and was only reliably accurate out to about 800 metres, although in skilled hands this could be increased, and the crew were exposed to incoming fire, shrapnel, and so on. What was required was a vehicle that could offer the same advantages of the BAT, and work alongside forward infantry positions while keeping a low profile and effective tank killing capability, and be easily movable by air and not limited by terrain or as costly as a tank. Thus the officers were tasked with designing such a vehicle, and the result was Chimera. The vehicle they had in mind needed to be accurate out to a thousand meters, and be able to perforate a 120mm plate, angle back at 60 degrees, with at least an 80% chance of hitting the target with the first shot. It also had to have a low profile, originally set at just 4 foot 6, which was later increased to 5 foot 6 as a reliable recruitment of hobbits was not guaranteed. And even so, the crew would be limited to just two. The vehicle also had to have a speed of 30 to 35 miles an hour, fit inside the new Phase 2 aircraft, and be immune to shell splinters, heavy machine gun fire, and mortar rounds, which were the primary threat to the infantry. It was considered very early on that none of this would be possible if the armour was also to be effective against enemy tanks, and so the low profile and concealment would be its primary defence against such weapons. This set of specifications was quite the challenge. Individually, the ingredients were not an issue, but to put them all together into something approaching a working platform was. The weapons were considered first, and three options were looked at. The first was a 180mm gun, which, by any reasoning, was not going to work. The sheer weight of the shells and the volume would reduce it down to about four to five rounds and be near impossible to move around. The next option was from Alcara missiles on top, as a guided weapons layout. This too was shot down as only a few could be carried and would be mounted on the outside, thus exposing the crew on any reload if extra missiles could even be carried, somewhat defeating the purpose. This left the team with conventional tank guns. The 20 pounder was in use. However, the weapon chosen was the new 105mm tank gun in development at the time, as this would fit into any 20 pound amount and offered better performance from the data they had. Firing APDS, it would be able to engage the target they had in mind, and although the idea of canister rounds was discussed, it does not appear they were finalised. Due to the small space, only 20 rounds of APDS would be carried. In order to get such a large gun, comparatively speaking, into such a small frame, the weapon would use a concentric recoil mechanism, essentially an annular hydraulic buffer wrapped around the gun tube, as opposed to bulky buffers inside the turret itself. The rest of the recoil, it was hoped, would be absorbed by the vehicle's hull and suspension. As the vehicle was limited to just two men, a commander gunner and driver loader, the Chimera would have been unable to fire on the move, and to assist the loader, a device was drawn up that would help move the rounds into the breech inside such a tight compartment. Theoretically, this device did most of the work, moving and pushing the rounds into place, and the loader was more of a manual backup, as his main job was to also drive the vehicle, with his controls being located inside the turret. 
The team working on Chimera also realised that the conventional turret would not work with this design, and so they settled on an oscillating turret, which gave the advantage of allowing the weapon to be mounted higher than normal, as the gun's depression was fixed to the turret's depression and not on pivot points, thus allowing the gun to depress fairly well while not having to worry about the breech hitting the turret roof. The downside of such a system is of course a very limited gun elevation, which is again limited to the turret's bustle's interaction with the rear decks. As a result of this, the gun had a respectable minus 10 degrees of gun depression, but also only a low 10 degrees of gun elevation. The rest of the hull is just as odd. In order to keep a very low profile, the engine was moved forwards and to the right hand side, and they chose a small Rolls Royce 198 horsepower B81 engine, normally reserved for smaller wheeled vehicles transversely mounted it and slanted it at 45 degrees inside the hull front to lower its profile. This in turn was connected to a Merritt Brown 5-speed gearbox at the front left, delivering power through a front drive wheel. This arrangement made the best use of space and allowed cold air to pass over the engine, transmission and out the fan on the top deck. The fuel tanks, which were quite limited at 100 gallons in total, were kept at the rear end of the vehicle and fuel pumped to the engines. However, such a small amount only gave the Chimera a limited operating radius of 75 miles. It was estimated overall the Chimera would have a top speed of 32 miles an hour and a power to weight ratio of 16.8. But this was deemed perfectly acceptable, after all it was never designed as a light tank. In order to mount all this gubbins, the team had to design a rather unique suspension system. The vehicle had five pairs of small 16 inch road wheels on either side connected to transverse torsion bars in a 1-2-2 configuration. The whole suspension system from track top to bottom was just 30 inches high. The tracks were also very narrow at 10 inches only and consisted of 120 links per track. Finally there was the armour. This was as mentioned very light, enough to take machine gun fire, splinters and mortar hits but not much else. The turret face was 29mm angled back for around 58mm at the most and 29 vertical plates on the side with a roof of just 25. The hull was even lighter at 25 angled back for 45 degrees for 35 effective and the sides of just 25. The upper deck was probably the most effective at 25 angled back at 80 degrees for 73mm of protection which while still relatively flimsy was better than some other options. This gave the Chimera a total weight of 12.4 tonnes, comparable to the AMX-13 with considerably more firepower, better protection, marginally slower, but at just 66 inches tall the Chimera's profile was much lower by some 32 inches. Chimera course was never built, it was a design project to overcome a series of obstacles. And while the early STT projects were a lot more in depth than the later ones, it's unlikely such a vehicle with its limited crew would have ever got any further. But like most STT projects, remains a curious footnote into the thinking of the time. So how did we go from this to that? Well, Wargaming wanted a light tank, but they did not want the name. They believed that players won't be able to remember two tanks with the same name. After all, there was another Chimera in the game. And it's not like we have dozens of things called Object after all, is it? So they asked if I would come up with a new name, which I flatly refused, before releasing the vehicle to much wrath, as they'd made an utter pig's ear out of it. Sadly, this led to many calling it truly terrible, useless and fake, none of which is true. But sadly, the history of the vehicle and its design will be forgotten in favour of a slowly failing computer game. Chimera was never a light tank, nor was it ever called Manticore, or even bore resemblance to how it behaves in the game. But hopefully from this video, you will have learned a bit about its real background, if nothing else. So until next time, toodle pip.